this is Eva and welcome to the Curious Chickpeas Kitchen. Today we will be making artisan walnut bread. Because it's walnut bread to begin with, we're gonna have to toast some walnuts. Um, if you're allergic to nuts, you can use pepitas. You don't have to use nuts. You can just make a plain um, bread without any fillings. Um, but I like, to switch it up sometimes and um, putting toasted walnuts in bread is really delicious. So for one loaf, you're gonna use about a cup of walnuts and you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And then you're gonna put your walnuts on a baking tray and stick them in the oven for about um, 20 minutes. While the walnuts are toasting, you can start uh, your bread. To measure your flour, you want to kind of stir it around so it's not settled, and then scoop, and then level. Make sure your scale is zeroed, and then one, and then you'll do the same thing with your whole wheat flour. Uh, for this bread, it's 25% whole grain and 75% white flour. Um, you can increase the whole grain if, if you would like. Um, I just find that I like approximately that ratio. I actually like to use white whole wheat flour, which is just a lighter variety of whole grain. Um, it just produces a lighter color at the finish. It's a little bit sweeter, um, but it's still high in protein. It's still a whole grain, so it's a nice alternative. But you can definitely, you know, use regular whole wheat flour, and I have many times. So if you are weighing it, make sure you zero your scale and then add the flour. So you will end up getting flour everywhere if you make a lot of bread. It's just the way life goes. Now make sure your hands are clean and go ahead and stir the flour together. So now we're gonna add the water. And with water, you um, wanna make sure you're using the correct temperature. So it's gonna be it's about 90 to 90 to five degrees Fahrenheit, and you're gonna stir it with your hand. You could use a wooden spoon for this step, or if you have a dough whisk, you can use that, but your hand will do. And then you really start to develop a feel for the dough. So I just stir it as if my hand was a spoon. I rotate the bowl to get all of the flour off the sides. And then use your other hand as a dough scraper to get extra dough off your hands. Now you're gonna cover this and let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. And this step allows the dough to hydrate. So essentially, um, the water will absorb into the flour, whereas once you add the salt, the salt will attract more of the water. So you wanna make sure that your dough, your flour is well hydrated. So when the walnuts are done from the oven, just um, in the oven, just pull them out. They should be slightly darker in color and uh, smell toasty. If they don't, just put them back in for a few minutes, check on them. Um, but otherwise, just set them aside and wait for them to cool. Once the flour is hydrated, that's when you wanna add the salt and your yeast. So you wanna measure out uh, a couple teaspoons of salt. or 12 grams, and you will sprinkle that on top of your dough. And the yeast, it's such a small amount, I usually just measure it with um, a teaspoon measure or half teaspoon measure, because we only need a half teaspoon, um, but you can weigh it, it's just, if your scale isn't very accurate, it's not gonna be the best, best measurement. Sprinkle that on top. 
Now you're gonna take your dough and with clean, wet hands, and make sure you take off any rings or jewelry where you're gonna, you don't want dough getting um, stuck in it. And you will be washing your hands a lot while you make bread. Um, so have some lotion nearby and make sure to use it. Okay, so then you're going to be mixing in the flour and the yeast. And to do that, you're gonna reach under the dough. Remember you have your yeast sprinkled on top and then you're gonna fold it over. Reach under and fold it on top. Reach under, fold it on top. And you're turning the bowl as you do this. You might have to re-wet your hands a few times during this process. But next, and again, using wet hand, pinch the dough between your thumb and your forefinger, middle finger. I guess I technically use my middle finger for that. And you're just gonna pinch it into a bunch of different segments. And then once you do that, you take it and you fold it again. And you'll notice that you started with probably a really sticky, messy dough, and now it's actually coming together um, and becoming a little less sticky and starting to look a little nicer. And it will, this process will take um, maybe about a minute. Uh, it could take a little longer when you're learning the, the process and the movements, but um, once you've been once you've done it a few times, it'll just go really quickly and, you know, won't take you very long. The nice thing about this dough and this method is it's, it's rather forgiving. Um, even if you've overproofed your dough and it becomes a sticky kind of soupy mess, you can still bake it. It won't get the nice rise. It won't be a nice tall loaf uh, with an open crumb, which is like the inside of the, the bread, but it'll still taste good and it will still be like a good product. So just try it and experiment and you'll figure it out. Once you've mixed in um, the salt and the yeast, you're gonna let the dough rest for around 10 minutes um, and then you'll do the same thing to add the walnuts. At this point, the baking tray should be cool enough to touch. Go ahead and pour the walnuts in. Quick note, if you're using um, whole walnuts, you'll just wanna chop them a little bit before sticking them in. So again, you want clean, wet hands, and you'll use the same process of folding the dough, lifting um, up and folding it on top of the walnut. And then you'll pinch the dough into segments, and then you'll fold it over. Having an add-in like walnuts, it does make it break more easily. You want to be gentle, um, but also that's just the nature of using walnuts in the dough. Um, if you're using something smaller or you're not putting anything else in, you won't have that problem. So again, this process will only take maybe 30 seconds to a minute. And when you are done, just using both hands, just twist the dough so whatever seam it has um, is sitting on bottom so that way uh, it doesn't break open and it just spreads um, more naturally as it relaxes. And then you're gonna leave this for 20 minutes. Pro tip, uh, when you are rinsing uh, little dough chunks off your hands, um, go ahead and rinse them down the sink right away because if you don't, they get caked on there and it's a lot harder to clean, but that's okay. All right, so uh, after 20 minutes, uh, that's when you're gonna start applying your first set of folds. So folding is what you do with this no need method instead of um, kneading. And essentially what it does is it helps the, the gluten strands, which is the protein in wheat flour, um, line up and uh, that helps it develop. Over the first hour and a half after you add your salt and your yeast to the dough, you're gonna apply three folds and that's gonna be every half an hour, which is why you apply the wall now it's 10 minutes in and then you give it another 20 minutes before folding. So if you're not using any add-ins, then after you add the salt and the yeast, you just wait 30 minutes and then you do your first fold. So again, 
clean hands, wet hands, a lot of hand washing. Uh, so the folding method, it's just the same um, thing that you did when you added your salt and your yeast. Um, you're just not going to be pinching it this time. So you take the dough and you gently lift it up to stretch it and then you fold it on top and you turn the dough bowl a little and you do the same thing. Um, and you just do that until the dough, it's gone from this sloppy mess to starting to form a tight ball. You take both hands and you twist the dough so that the seam is facing down. Then you cover it, you walk away, let it rest for 30 minutes, and then you're gonna come back and repeat it. Okay, after it's been 30 minutes, it's time to apply the second fold. So again, repetitive, but wash your hands. And we're gonna do the same folding process. And you'll notice that this time, the dough doesn't start out as slack as it did the first time you did it. Um, and as you do this, the dough becomes harder and harder to stretch. So you just do that again for about a minute and twist to set the dough down. Just cover it and let it uh, rest for another half an hour. So it's time for the last fold. You'll notice that your dough is starting to get a little puffy, which is good. It means the yeast is working. If it's not changing at all, that means probably your yeast isn't good and that sucks. Again, it goes pretty quickly and we're gonna let that sit for 30 to 60 minutes. Now, this partially depends on the temperature it is in your room. Um, if you, if your room is like a lot hotter than 70 degrees, which it is in the summer, or um, if you keep your heat up really high, then you'll probably only do a half an hour. Um, but if your kitchen is really cold, then you'd probably wanna get a little closer to an hour. Um, so yeah, about a half an hour and then stick it in the fridge um, where it will let it rest overnight. The next morning or uh, before you're ready to bake, you wanna get your dough from the fridge and you will go ahead and prepare either a banneton, um, but if you don't have one of those, you can definitely use just a regular mixing bowl, like a large mixing bowl and put down a lint-free towel and flour that and you can definitely use that. All you do here is put some flour down and then just using your hand, you spread it around the edges um, and into the grooves and that will just help keep the dough from sticking when it's time to turn it over. So you can set that aside and then you want to flour your work surface and you take your dough. I like to put a little flour around the rim. So I'll just help ease it out. And then I just gently loosen it with my hand. Again, you want to be careful not to tear the dough. Okay, make sure you got it all out. And then ease the dough on the surface into kind of a like larger blob. And then you're gonna do a similar process you did to folding the dough. Um, you're just gonna lift up from the edge and put the dough in the center. And just go around the four or five times needed to make the ball of dough. So now here, I turned it over and you have a ball of dough. But you wanna create a taut skin around the edge. So what you do is you wanna to go to a clean part of the counter. You cup the dough with your hands and you pull the dough towards you. And then you turn it and you do that again. And this won't work if there's too much flour on the dough because you need the dough to stick to the surface. Um, so if there's too much flour, just wipe it away. And you just do that a few times till you are happy with the, the tautness of the skin on the dough ball. Um, and now, so I have my nice ball and I just need to make sure it's well floured so it doesn't stick. And sprinkle a little flour on top of it. And then I place it seam side down um, on, into the banneton or proofing basket. And then you wanna cover it with a towel and let it sit 
for an hour while the oven preheats. So you want to turn your oven to 475 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you want to put a large cast iron, um, high heat proof safe, um, Dutch oven. This one is five quarts. So preheat your oven with the cast iron Dutch oven, and it can be enamel covered. That's fine. Um, inside of it. Then we give it an hour to preheat. Okay, when your oven is good and preheated and um, your dough is nice and proofed, press down on it and see that the dough springs back a little bit, but not all the way, and that um, it also doesn't stay fully indented. If you press down into it and it doesn't um, spring back at all, then you've overproofed it. That's okay, bake it anyway, you can't fix it, but then next time, you know that you shouldn't let it proof for as long. Using oven mitts, and be careful because it's very hot, you wanna take the cast iron out of the oven and take the lid off of it. And then carefully turn over your bowl, tap the outside to release it. You gently ease it into the cast iron pot. Put the lid on it and let put it back in the oven. You wanna set the timer for 30 minutes with the lid on. And then after 30 minutes, we're gonna take the lid off of the cast iron dish and let it bake an additional about 20 minutes or until you've reached the desired level of um, darkness on the crust. When your bread is done, it's time to take it out of the oven. Be careful, it's really hot. I recommend you buy some good oven mitts for this. You don't want to mess with hot pads and accidentally burn your arms. Okay, so then you just flip it over and take it out and place it on the cooling rack um, to cool. And you're gonna wanna let that cool for around um, 20 minutes at least before cutting into it. Don't cut into it sooner than that um, because it finishes baking as it cools actually. Anyway, whatever, let's shut up and just try this. I'm going to try a slice. Really big slice. I have some homemade vegan butter here. And the bread is still a little warm, so it's just gonna melt right on there. Okay, you don't even need this butter. I just really like it. Should just it's so perfect. Mm. Mm. That's really good. Now, allowing the dough to proof overnight in the fridge, it um it develops the flavor, so it's a lot tastier that way with like than compared to any dough that you make quickly, you know, within like two or three hours, it's not gonna develop the same amount of flavor. If you like this video and you wanna see more, please subscribe and follow me on Instagram, find me on Facebook, and you can check out the recipe on my website. If you wanna learn more about baking bread, I highly recommend the book, Flour, Water, Salt, Yeast by Ken Forkish. I read a lot of bread books, but that one is really my favorite and I really recommend it. So try it, check it out. I'll give links to everything I used today below. Um, and thank you for watching my first video.